In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Lovely to be here with you uh, today again. Uh, just reviewing what happened in chapter uh, 20. <clears throat> uh, chapter 20, we saw how uh, Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was coming against Ahab. And Ahab, the one who, even after seeing all the glory and the things that Elijah and God did and everything, right? Uh, still did not, he did not take the path of God, did not follow, and was still being led by his wife, Jezebel. And then we saw in the last chapter, chapter 20, last week, how, you know, uh, still God helped him out. Still God came to his rescue. And I think the theme that we concluded the whole chapter with is that uh, God's blessing is not because of my righteousness, but rather God's blessing are because of his goodness, right? So sometimes we mistake in that, or even the other side, I'm a bad person, therefore I do not deserve to be, I do not deserve God. This is not the right thinking, not the right approach. Or I'm doing good, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm reading my Bible, I'm coming to church, I'm serving this, 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 why God is doing this with me, okay? In both cases, no good, but uh, we saw last chapter, even though with still standing up for him and defending him, and we saw how Ahab even said, like when, when, when the man of God came and told him, uh he was um he was saying like he was like kind of like amazed what's going on why by whom who's gonna help me out and then god uh surely showed him and even after that he 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 spared the life of ben hadad and and that did not please god that was not sitting well with god and that's how we uh close the chapter even though God, God's goodness blessed uh, Ahab, still he is he's completely out of it, like he's not getting it whatsoever. We're going to see the continuation. Now God is going to show him the other side, right? Last chapter, God is trying to win Ahab over by all means to support, to guide, to guard, to, you know. Now God is going to say, okay, oh, you did not hear the first time, the second time, the third time. Okay. Now it's time to take a different measure. Okay. We have Adil here with us and we are all going to hopefully participate. God bless. Uh, first King is 22 chapters. So uh, you finished with Abuna chapter 20 last time. Hopefully we can finish the last, the last two chapters today. So next time we start... Uh, a new book. We'll see if we can do that. As Abuna said, um, Ahab, who is the king of Israel, let me let me remind you again that Israel at that time, the country, is divided into two parts. The northern part has a king, and the southern part has a different king. The northern part, the capital is Samira, and the southern part, the capital is Jerusalem. Ten tribes up north, two tribes in the south. So at any point of time, we have two kings, one for the north, one for the south. We talk about King Ahab, King Ahab, the king of the north. And as Abuna said, Ahab is a very interesting person because yes, he did a lot of bad things, but Ahab had some good little good stuff in him. And God wanted to use these little candles, let's call it, to try to, to, to win him, try to win him, because that's God's goal in him. And God used everything with Ahab. Most important, in front of his eyes, in front of Ahab's eyes, what happened when Elijah brought 400, 450 prophet of the of Baal, the idol, 
And he made it very clear to the, to the entire nation and told them, let's see what's going to happen, which we're we going to do two sacrifices. Remember the story, two sacrifices. And let's see, you pray to your God, I'll pray to my God and see which God will send fire and to consume the sacrifice. And that will be the, 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 the right God or the, the God that we should worship. And it was very clear that when, uh, when Elijah Zash just prayed for a few minutes, uh, God sent the fire and consumed the entire sacrifice. That, that happened in front of Ahab. That was, should be good enough for Ahab to return, to repent, and to worship the God of Israel. But that did not work. Um, let's see what's, what's going to happen here. So first King chapter 21. And it came to pass after the things that Naboth, the, Jir, the Jezreelite, Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel. Jezreel is a little small town. And this guy, Naboth, had a small field in this town. Next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria, apparently, I have the king had a kind of another residence in Jezreel. Maybe Jezreel was his summer place, his winter, winter place, we don't know. But he had a palace there. Next to the palace, a small vineyard belongs, belonged to Nebus. So I have spoke to Nebus saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it's near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. So basically, the king, King Ahab, offered Naboth, give him an offer. He told him, I want to buy your piece of land. And I'm going to give you either another piece of land better than this one, or I'll give you money because I need this piece of land to extend my palace. Uh, see, there is always a say, I guess in every business, they say what? Everything is for sale for the right price, right? If you have, yeah, you hear, you hear that all day long. Um, someone, for instance, has a store and the store is working very well bringing good income. Um, and he says, you know what? I will never sell because this is the income for my family, for my life. Someone comes to him and offer him a good, a good amount of money and he sells it. So in reality, yes, everything is up for sale. But let's see what's, what's going to happen here, how Nebus will, will react to this offer. But Nebus said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my father's to you. So basically, Naboth or Naboth um, refused the offer. Why did he refuse the offer? Because it was a very attractive offer, if you think about it. It's an attractive offer. The king is told him, I will give you a better piece of land, better location, probably more square footage. Or if you don't want any properties, I'll give you whatever. Tell me how much I'll give you, uh, money or, or silver. Naboth refused the offer. Why? He said, the Lord forbid that I, sh I should give you the inheritance of my fathers to you. If you look back, if we go back to the book of Joshua, what happened? Joshua brought the Israelites, like Moses took the Israelites from Egypt, brought them out of Egypt, and Joshua brought them to the promised land and divided the land among the tribes. And they brought each tribe and, and gave him a piece of land. This piece of land belongs to that specific tribe and should be inherited from generation to generation. No one can sell anything. This is my piece of land. I die, my kids will have it, and so on. So, and this is the norm. Like, 
I don't know like how I have thought about it. Since when King Ahab, since when people sell the lands? This is, there is something never, never uh, gonna be sold for any kind of money. Since how did he think about that? But because Ahab is not a man of God, he doesn't really respect at all the laws of Moses. So it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. But look at this guy, Nebuchadnezzar, who said, who refused the offer from the king and told him, the Lord forbid, as if he's telling him, remember what the Lord said, King Ahab, the Lord forbid. He didn't tell him, no, I don't want to sell. No, it's not up for sale. No, he, he, he refused the offer from God's point of view. He said, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. Um, before I leave this point, I want to I wanna just mention something. That when I read it, I was thinking about it today, actually. Naboth um, represents a guy who, who really very strong in his faith. He said, no. Sometimes we have to be very strong in our no. Someone like me say, well, it doesn't matter. I, 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 I will go to another church or another uh, faith, you know, uh, it's all the churches. They all like, they all worship God. If it's Catholic, if it's, uh, if it's a Protestant or whatever, I will leave the church, I will go to another church because uh, I will gonna get married to this girl or vice versa. The girl leaves here. I'm not saying St. Mark, I'm saying our faith. Sometimes we sell our faith for any price, for any price. We forget, sometimes we forget that this is the inheritance. This faith that we live in right now has been brought to us through the blood of the martyrs. 2,000 years, millions, hundreds of thousands or millions of martyrs to, 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 to bring us this faith. And we take it for granted. We come here on Sunday, we attend the liturgy, we, we take communion, but think about it. How did we receive this? Now look at the churches we have. I mean, if we take it even on the very um, short period of time of history here in Canada, we all came, Abu Nawar came before us and established what we have. Look, look, look what we have right now. Oh, no, no, this church is very far. Very far, how far from you, my friend? No, 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 it's 15 minutes. I have another church. I can go to SMS, or I don't know, I don't know, it's SMS, it's, 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 I never called church about this anyway, but um, I have a church beside my house five minutes, uh, five minutes away. Fine, it's beautiful that we have so many churches around us, but look what we have. And even now we have a bishop. <laughs> so all of this, this is, we have to treasure this. This is my point. We have to treasure what we have, appreciate what we have. Neighbors, it presents this kind of guy. Anyway, let's keep going. And just add to add it, uh, no, no, it's good. So <clears throat> um, the inheritance is very so something kind of like holy, right? Uh, giving up the inheritance is something very looked down upon, right? Frowned upon, uh, upon. And uh, if when if we hopefully we get at some point to study Deuteronomy or like Joshua or something like that, uh, Deuteronomy, I think. Uh, right? And uh, we study the law. So if you ever get in a position where you actually have to like borrow money to maintain your land, right? The law permits you to do that, but the lender will have to give you the money right and you start working and working and then they own the the land up to 49 years maximum and on the 14 the 50th year they have to free the land and give it back to the person and that's what's called the year of jubilee you ever read that the year of the jubilee the jubilee year you come across that in the bible that's what it is like all the those who are slave 
they are free. All those who own money or land or because of this, because of this point. So it's more, it's a very religious thing, right? Um, because God, like, in today's, uh, in today's uh, standard, it's like, what? Like, I have to خلاص, like for, forgive all the, the debt. Yeah, this is what God, but to say, like, I am your God. I'm the one who provides for everyone, right? What is that? Uh, yeah, interest-free mortgage. <laughs> but, but look at it. Like, if you have a mortgage for 50 years, right? Nobody has a mortgage for 50. Most mortgages, like, you finish them within, like, what, 30 years, the maximum now, or 40 years, right? Even in, in the civil uh, uh, system, like, you, the maximum mortgage, like, and I think at some point they introduced 40 and 45, right? And now they scale back, so... Right, <laughs> the real estate people. Yeah, but in the in 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 the Jewish law, the maximum you can go up to is forty nine. Forty nine, right? Forty nine and forty nine. What is forty nine? Seven times seven. Perfection. The perfect of perfection. And the fiftieth year, like you start. This is. A year and they celebrate it. You're gonna come like I think there are a few parts in the Bible you read about this and also like the year the, the Jubilee. Uh let me find it and then can share. But this is very important, and this is what Adil is referring to. Uh Ahab is approaching this as a transaction. Nabuth is a, is is approaching this as a religious thing, right? Big difference, right? Thank you. Sorry, Adil. Actually, by the way, till today in England, uh, there is certain parts of England, they call it crown land. And when you buy a property, in, for instance, in London, in central London, um, you always, what, what determines the price is how many years left on the lease. So it's 99 years. So the property's price goes high if, he, if it's left, for instance, eight years left, okay? It could be the same property, the same building, but now it's the remaining part is 30 years. So in, in, in today's law in certain parts of the world, they use the same thing. The, the land owned by the king or the crown. And by the way, here in Canada, it's the same thing in certain parts owned by the natives, same thing. I know areas, for instance, in Georgina, owned by natives, and it's, you find it, how come they sell it very cheap? Because it's only left 20, you have it for 20 or 30 years. And they take the land back. The government guaranteed them that. Anyway, verse four. <clears throat> so I have went into his house, solemn and displeased because of the word which enabled the Jerusalemite had spoken to him. Um, solemn, I, did, I didn't know the, the meaning of solemn, by the way. So I checked it in the dictionary. It means gloomy. Gloomy. What so, is it in Arabic? Uh, Muhtam? Muhtam. Huh? Muhtam. 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 So I have went to his house swollen and displeased because of the word which enabled the, then the, then the king. Then the king. And that's what uh, his wife will do now to him. Because of the word which enabled the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would, would eat. No food. He's a kid. Show like it. So, but, but Jezebel, his wife, this is the man of the house. Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so swollen that you eat no food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Nebuchadnezzar the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your, your, your vineyard for money, or else if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. 
Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So that, that also shows you that Ahab, Ahab's personality was very weak. This guy is, uh, had, had a problem, psychological problem for sure. Okay? Some... Bed, I'm not gonna eat any. He showed that. But his wife came to him and told him what happened. Why are you why are you upset? So he told her, so don't worry. See, his wife told him what he did. You now exercise authority over Israel. You now exercise authority over Israel. What kind of king of king are you? I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. Let's see how did she take care of that. And she wrote letters in, in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal. Imagine she has his seal. And sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with neighbors. She wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast and seat neighbors with high honor among the people. And seat two men said, scroundums before him to bear witness against him, saying, you have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. Very bad, very bad plan. And she did it in a perfect way fast. Okay, since when Jezebel, she never practiced anything like this. She, does, she doesn't even believe in any, uh, she's, she worship God. So, but she put it in a perfect spiritual form, said fast and bring charges against neighbors and say that he blasphemed against God, against God and the king. And according to the laws, if you blaspheme against God and the king, you must die. Very straightforward law. But she's smart at doing it because she, she has a religious problem in front of her yeah, and she finds a religious way to overcome yeah, that, yeah. Right? he's not gonna like no yani, everybody's gonna be on a uh, neighbor's side, side because yeah. everybody knows god's yeah. law well, but if she comes and she says oh let's fast and pray and you know i should so god will reveal and then she brings uh, uh like witnesses false witnessing right and he blasphemed against god and the king yeah then she legitimized, exactly. right? Those ones, looks everything looks, right? Yeah. yeah, we do that the same thing many times, like, right? Uh, I did this, 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 okay, but like, okay, uh, yeah. I'm gonna make it up to God. Okay, let, let, let me make it uh, religious. How? Okay, let me, uh, what? I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna pay uh, uh, a bit more money. Okay, I did this. Okay, let me just go. Confess about it. Um, I'm looking, I'm making, uh, yeah, like following the protocol to legitimize it yeah. and make it look okay in front of God, right? Verse eleven. So the men of the of his city, the elders and the nobles who were inhabitants of this of his city, did as Jezebel has sent to them as it was written in the letter which she, which she had sent to them. They proclaimed the fast and seated neighbors with high honor among the people. And two men, scoundrels, and came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and they stoned him with stones so that he died. So that he died. Mm -hmm. They Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And is dead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I see a lot of similarities between this story, for instance, and the story of David and Bathsheba. You know, when you do something very bad, 
and you cover it. David made a plan. So Beatsheba's husband, Uriah, gets killed in the war and he ended up married. Like, plan like this, and you cover it up and you think that eh, everything looks fine. They came, now just guy neighbors, blasphemed against God and the king. So they killed him and told Jezebel, mission accomplished. Are there any similarities to this and Christ? Yes. I think Hadi is coming to that. No, no, no. There are two big similarities here. Can you catch them? Did you catch them? Yeah. When Jesus tried. Yes. All, what was the, the false, charge? False witnesses came against him. Exactly. Also, what was the charge? Blasphemy. That's why the high priest, uh, like, yeah, tore his garment. He said, truly, he blasphemed, right? We don't need any more witnesses, right? Exactly. And then how, how did they kill Jesus Christ? Where? On the cross, where? Golgotha, which is what? Outside the city. Outside the walls of the city, right? Jerusalem, you know, the, the you know, remember that the door, the old city, and then you step outside and then you find the, you like that, huh? Okay, good. Yeah, so these, this is the, it, we told you like may, how many times now, almost every week, right? We pick something and you see it right away in the New Testament, right? And right away it brings to your, oh, this is New Testament. Right. So the, the New Testament is very much alive in the Old Testament. Right. So much similar. Thank you so much, Michael. That's very good for pointing that out. Yeah. So one more question. Yeah. Why did the, the neighbors, why was he advised, or why was he sitting in high uh, honor with the, like, with, uh, like, mm. among the people? Like, was he, like were they just doing that for the trial, or he was just in like in that kind of status, and then they um, he's among the people, and they brought him. So, like as if like you want to say, you're innocent until you're proven otherwise, kind of. So this is his place, like. Yeah, and Jesus Christ was also brought among, uh, like all the priests and the the scribes and the Pharisees and the high priests. So he was sitting among the nobles as well, and then they they uh, they tried him in, right, while he was there, and then later on also Pontius Pilate, and then Herod, the king, the same scene. So, good. Good, you guys are now uh, thinking like the same uh, way. Good, good. You're thinking like, uh, you know, uh, biblical scholars. That's good. <laughs> Isn't that good? Uh, good. They're doing it on their own. They don't need to. Uh, good. I think they sent Stephen when, when they stoned him also. They yes. came outside the city and stoned him. Yes, yeah. sent Stephen as well. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, St. Paul, how many times he said, I, yeah. how many times I faced death and how many, uh, one time they took him outside uh, Ephesus and they stoned him to, and, and he died and he came back to life. And, right. Good. Verse 15. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, arise. Take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Now she's telling him, Yalla umba'i, ifrah wa al'ab, yalla. The vineyard that you wanted to have, it's your Christmas gift. Naboth died, and it's yours now. Isn't it supposed to go to this place? Huh? Isn't that piece of music? Uh, yes, yes, I think I think they also stoned neighbors' family. Oh, yeah, 
because if Nebus dies, his kids shouldn't take the land. Sure. Yeah, they should. So I think they also stoned, and maybe it comes later on, uh, that they stoned his mm -hmm. children or his house. It was a very bad crime. Yeah. We'll see. For Nebus is not alive but dead. So it was when I have heard that Nebus was dead that I have got up and went down, went down to take position of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Now, I have didn't ask, how did that happen? <laughs> See, Yanni, how did that happen? How did that happen very fast? I was talking to the, I was, I gave the offer to the guy like last week or a couple of days ago. Died just like that? Didn't ask. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, when, when we want to do something, it's not really good. You don't want to really investigate. It came, it happened. And I'm telling that Ahab is, Ahab is a killer, even though, even though he did not participate in, in, in the act of killing, but God will look at him that he is the killer. Because because of him, all of this happened. Now the fun begins. Mm -hmm. Elijah comes in. Yeah, he always like brings uh, very interesting things happening. Good news to him. Uh, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he always brings in action. He never keeps. He always keeps you uh, like engaged and <laughs> at the edge of your seat, not knowing what's gonna happen next. <laughs> huh? Yeah, like, uh, as Abuna said, Elijah, for the last probably two, three chapters, was disappeared. Mm -hmm. He was not, he was to totally disappeared. He was not in the picture. Verse 17, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, now God is going to talk to Elijah. Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Naboth where he has gone down to take position of it. You shall speak to him saying, thus says the Lord, have you murdered and also take position? And you shall speak to him saying, thus says, thus says the Lord. By the way, same thing. Uh, when, when Nathan, the prophet, came to David, okay, and told him, you killed and now you're taking the woman as a wife. So Elijah is going to say the same thing. <clears throat> and you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, in the place where dogs licked the blood of Nehus, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. Very bad. Very bad. Uh, when, uh, like, someone. Not we talk about a king when the king dies, should be like a very uh, honorable funeral, okay, uh, and it should be like you know it's it's kind of celebration for his life, but for someone to die and the dogs will will lick his blood, that means like he will be he will die in a very bad way, and no one will care about him. This is a message that God wants to send Ahab. So Ahab said, Ahab, so Elijah came to Ahab to deliver the message. So Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me, O oh my enemy? <laughs> why, is, why is Ahab saying that? As Abuna said, because each time Elijah come to Ahab, giving him a warning, happened before, remember? He told him, for three years and six months, there will be no rain. And the great famine happened, happened because of what Elijah said. This is a good part about Ahab. He knows that whatever Elijah says, it will happen. He believes, or he believed in whatever Elijah said. If Elijah says anything, he believes it. And that's what makes me very wondering. I mean, you believe. In this man, you see, 
you get scared of what he's going to say to you, then believe, believe in him, believe in his God. Very simple. If you believe in that, what's going to happen to you, then why don't you believe his God? Last time uh, he met him for trouble, he called him what? Elijah answered him back and said, it, you find it chapter 18, verse uh, chapter 18, verse 17 and 18. And Elijah answered him, I have not troubled Israel, yeah. but you and your father's house <laughs> have. <laughs> Elijah did battle too. You know, in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he's talking to the king. You know, like Elijah is talking to the king, but he doesn't even care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he, something nice here, Yanni, yeah, maybe a couple of weeks ago when Adul was saying, like, I was like trying to <laughs> make Elijah how what he did like wasn't good. But you this is where you see like something really nice about Elijah. Yanni, yeah, for the past chapter. God used so many other prophets, so many other people to get a message to Ahab. Why don't you just use another person, right? Elijah would be sitting down and like thinking, yani God, you know, like you, you said, thank you for your services and you're going to, you chose like Elisha, you know, uh, Elisha, you know, and, and you, you don't need my services anymore. And look, you, you use other people to serve. Why oh, you're coming back to me now? You know? But no, he did not do that. God, you want to use me? Sure. You don't want to use me? Fine too. I'm just, I'm, uh, whatever you tell me. Right? And many times, like, you know, we do the opposite. Like, you know, now you need me. Now you need me. Right? I was there. I was serving all the time and I'm doing this and that. And, you know, and you guys did not like how I served you guys. <laughs> so like you guys did not like how I served. Well, now you need my service. Oh no, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not coming. No, Allah, enough. I don't want any more trouble. You know, no, like my ego. But Elijah, this is the 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 the, the humility, the true humility of Elijah. Okay. And if, if you stick around a little bit longer for second king, you're going to see how Elijah go to heaven. Okay? Just stick around for a little bit longer, for a few weeks, to see this great man, how he goes up to heaven. Okay? Just to keep you in suspense for a bit longer. <laughs> and you can also see the similarity between Elijah and St. John the Baptist. Yes. That's you know, both, both prophets face the king. Or something wrong, and they get, they were very strong in delivering the message. Verse twenty. So I have said to Elijah, "Have you found me, O my enemy?" And he answered, "I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord." Look at the message. You sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring a calamity on you. I will take away your posterity. And will cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both bond and free. I would make your house like the house of Jerubaan, the son of Nabat, and the, like the house of Bisha, the son of Ahisha. If you remember those, those kings, um, they did the evil and, 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 and built temples for the idols. And that was in the beginning of the, of the book. Um, because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. Who's talking here? God through Elijah. So God is saying, which you have, the sins which you have provoked me to anger. Provoked me. And when we think about that, our sins provokes God. God is saying, the sins that you did provoked me. And we think God here is, is trying to speak our language. God, you cannot prove. In the Bible, it says that God 
uh, regret regretted what he did. Not never, never regrets. Nadam Allah. No. Fagis Nadam Allah. But God sometimes uses our own language that we may understand his, how he feels. When we sin, we provoke him. How do we provoke God? I don't know. I don't know how. But I can tell you how can you provoke me. I, this I know. Because we all get provoked by things. So God is trying to speak our own language to understand. When we sin, we provoke God. Imagine that when we sin, God, how God feels. It's exactly how we feel when someone provokes you. Verse 23. And concerning Jezebel, now God gave uh, Ahab the punishment. Okay? Now, there's another one. Concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, the dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. Very bad end to Ahab, his wife, and his family. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do the wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel, his wife, steered him up. <clears throat> and he <laughs> behaved very abundant in, in following idols according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about more. Can you believe that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Look at Ahab. Remember in the beginning, I told, you, I told you that Ahab has good things in him. One of the things that Ahab had, one of the good things that he believes Elijah. And that's why, as Abuna said, that's why probably God sent him Elijah at that time. Remember, God still wants Ahab to repent. Even all this bad history, God is still trying to bring him back. So he said God's message where he would be like his death would be he would like a dog, his wife would be mm -hmm. in, by the walls and he couldn't get under it. So does that mean someone like him these things are going to happen to him because that if God's message needs to be fulfilled, well, uh, it's just a warning from God, and you can repent, and things can change your future. Uh, wait, and you're going to see. Just <laughs> I, I, good question. So it's, those it's online, a, uh, the question, question, the people online, the, the question is like all these things that God uh, promises going to happen to Ahab. Uh, you know, uh, now that he repented, uh, is God going to change all of that or is it still going to happen to him? Okay. And that's why we said, uh, just wait, because the online, sometimes the sound is a bit. Far, I want to just tell you something. This is not repentance. Okay. This is the first steps of repentance. Sometimes when we, when we commit a sin, we feel bad about it. Good. And we punish ourselves. Good. And we 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 feel sad. Good. Huh? But then call it a good, that's not enough. The prodigal son, what did he do? He went through the, the, all the steps. He regretted. He hated what he did. But he did something very important. He said, I will go now, now to my father. He took an action. He took an action. Zacchaeus, when our Lord Jesus Christ went to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus stole money from people, collected taxes more than he should have. What did he do? He, he stood in front of our Lord and said, Lord, from now on, I'm not going to do anything. Good. Is that good enough? No. But I will pay back everyone. Not once, but four times. Zacchaeus went bankrupt after this visit, of course. Okay? He said, I will pay back four times. 
So repentance, two parts. Part one, feelings, regret, sadness, beautiful. Like Mr. Ahab here or King Ahab did. This is very good, but not good enough. Now Ahab must take actions, must change, must turn in the other direction. That's repentance. And to, I think to answer your question, if God had, would have seen Ahab totally repented, yes, he would change his course, he change his judgment. God has no problem to know where the guy can have. That tattoo fan I got, the verse 20 line, let me, let me show you here. So after Ahab did all of that, verse 28, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Spirit, saying, see what God will say to Elijah now. God is talking to Elijah. See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Shuf Rabbina how, how kind God is. هو ربنا شاف أهاب عمل الحكاية فرح وعمل المنظر ده واللي بيسعد شغل هجايس اللي عمله أهاب ده رح ربنا قال لي إلايجا شاف يا إلايجا شفت شفت أهاب شفت أهاب حلو إزاي شفت ربنا بيكلم إلايجا بص إلايجا رد عليه يقول له إيه because he has humbled himself before me شفت يا إلايجا he humbled himself before me I will not bring see God change it I will not bring the calamity in his days, in the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. Like, and then his, his son was much worse than that. So mm -hmm. there's nothing in the sense of the parents can be actually? No, no, there's nothing <laughs> to do with that, but I'm repentance will, in the body, like in the God, change it, the course of his punishment to Ahab only because he saw some si good signs come coming out of him. But unfortunately, Ahab did not complete his repentance. Because the repentance, as I said, must take actions, not only this kind of feelings. This is the beginning, but not a complete action of repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, <clears throat> it's kind of like Ahab, like he really like got so scared right because of elijah because of the word of god because of all the what he told him the consequences so he's trying to do to, to minimize the damage or something okay but you know like adel said it's not gonna work that much it can only go so far so uh to see the the end of this uh we're going to have to take it for next week. There is a very interesting uh, character called Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Jehoshaphat. Amazing names, right? <laughs> Ahab, Jehoshaphat. Okay. And uh, you, we're going to see how now, you know, <laughs> Ahab is going to look for the word of God, but not in the right ways. What do I mean by that? Let me explain a little bit. Not in the right ways. You know, just let it for next week. You know, it's going to be better. Okay. Jehoshaphat is going to get us uh, some interesting stuff going on with prophecy and the word of God and Ahab looking what to do and things like that. And we will conclude with that and then move into Second Kings. Of course, uh, long time ago, uh, Kings was just one book, right? Adul was just one book, but at some point, yeah, it split one, uh, first Kings and second Kings. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Hmm? It's just a matter of organization and, uh, you know, um yani like how how things are flowing yeah. oh after after maybe yeah 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 all yeah the bible like all these are uh put into chapters uh, no put into verses verses and put into chapters and put into books or not books uh, later on 
way, way later on. I think uh, the 10th century, something uh, yeah. recent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like at the back then it was, uh, it was more like just like a whole lump of things and you just keep reading. Yeah. Exodus and on. Yeah. Are we going to be going into uh, basically these books were numbered in chapters or were they never? No, numbered? they were not numbered in chapters. We have a guy there sitting at the back. His name is Fedi. I think he can. Uh, you remember these things, the chapters? Um, yeah, the, the uh, how, how like uh, the book was split, uh, uh, the Bible. They made it in chapters. They made it in chapters and verses. And... Seventeenth. I thought the tenth. Okay, sure. Seventeenth. Yeah. 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 Each book was named by the first word of the book. The first word of the book, right, Adam? Ready? Right, Yanni. So yeah, word? yes, no, like fil uh, el bed, like in, in Hebrew, like the word, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word, like usually the, and we still keep that because this is something new. You know, when we keep this, huh? We, if you, in Psalms, if you, when you attend the liturgy and we're praying the, uh, the Ajbiya, right? If you notice, like uh, the deacon, when he comes around, he says what? He does not say Psalm number. In English now, we say it like, oh, Psalm uh, nine, you know, Psalm 90, Psalm, Psalm uh, 23, and so on. But if, if you remember, like the old uncles and deacons, they will come and tell you what? Just the first few words of the Psalm, right? You know, just the first few words. And right away, you know which psalm he's, he, he wants to read. And that's why Jesus Christ on the cross, when he said, Elui, Elui, Lima Sabakhtani, right? He's basically referring to that psalm. There was, the psalms were not numbered. The psalms were, were, were uh, titled by the first, the beginning of the first, right? That's why Jesus Christ used that. So like Exodus, what would be the, the name of the book of Exodus? Just turn it <laughs> and read the first word. <laughs> now. <laughs> right? Now, the book of the now. Right? And, and so on. <laughs> Scrolls, yeah. Yeah, Fadi, Fadi is more recent than me. Okay. And the glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Abuna, please pray, pray for us. Abuna, please. We just end a very short prayer and then just uh, our Father. Father Abuna. Father Abuna. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God of heaven. We thank you, God, for the time that you've given us to learn your word and live by it, and to, to open our eyes and our heart and our minds to understand more and more about it and to live and learn from it. Give us a time and give us a dedication to the word of God, even with the, with the little time that we give it. Uh, make it work through us and change us and cleans us uh, like a snow. Make us whiter than a snow with the word of God. You have, you have to, to, to give it us and then open our, um, our mind and help us understand it with the, with the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We ask that with the intercession of St. Mark and St. Mary and, and 
uh, hear us when we uh, when we pray to you, our Father, who art in heaven. Thank you so much, Abuna.